Good morning. Thank you for joining us. Please turn in your Second Kings chapter 11, verses 1 through 3, and then we'll also be in Second Kings chapter 12, verses 1 through 2. My name is Nathan Grisham. Uh, I'm the youth minister at Dogwood Grove Baptist Church. We are glad you have joined us, and uh, <clears throat> if you enjoy this Bible study today, you'll find more Bible studies like this on YouTube where you're watching, so uh, please uh, watch those as well. One of the things that um, folks learn about me is that I enjoy the Bible. I enjoy God's Word. I read it a lot, and, uh, and I enjoy reading it, and I enjoy characters in the Bible that a lot of people don't talk a lot about, like Ehud. He's one of my favorites, and you'll see in these uh, Bible study videos, there's one in there about Ehud, and I enjoy these Bible characters. And one of the reasons I do is because a lot of people think they know all of the stories in the Bible, so they don't read it as much. And there's so many stories in there um, that we don't realize and that we haven't learned and memorized. And they're great stories. And this is another one of them today. Uh, today, we're going to be talking about a lady named uh, Jehosheba. And she was an aunt or an auntie or an aunt, however you want to say that. And um, she was a great one in the Bible. So for all you aunts or aunties out there, uh, this is a great example. If you want somebody to go by and uh, a great role model in the Bible, she would be a great one because she steps up to the plate. Second uh, Kings chapter 11, verses 1 and one through 3. And uh, there's a lot of proper names in here, so I'm going to work my way through the names. But uh, bear with me. It says, when Althaliah, the mother of Ahaziah, saw that her son was dead, she proceeded to destroy the whole royal family. But Jehoshaphat, the daughter, the daughter of Jehoran and sister of Haziah, took Joash, son of Ahaziah, and stole him away among the royal princes who were about to be murdered. She put him and his nurse in a bedroom to hide him from Althea. So he was not killed. He remained hidden with his nurse at the temple of the Lord, of the Lord for six years while Althea ruled the land. <clears throat> All right. So here we have a story of Queen Althelia. Uh, her son passes away. And so therefore she decides that she's going to be the queen. And it says that she is determined to annihilate uh, the royal family. Um, and, and so in doing this, this her um, this young little boy's aunt decides that this ain't going to happen. So she gets this little fella and uh, <clears throat> she gets Joash and she hides him in the temple of the Lord um, with his nurse. And so that way he can grow and not be killed. In history, when you look at royal families, uh, kings and queens are willing to do whatever they can do to keep their power. And I think this is one of the things that, that we should be uh, careful of and be aware of is that when we get power, be it um, political power or leadership in the church or leadership at work um, or leadership role in our family, uh, we need to make sure that the power doesn't go to our head like it did this lady. That And that happens to a lot of people. And so we have to make sure that when we get put in a position of authority, that we stay humble and that we put ourselves last and put other people first. That's being a servant leader. And that's really important. Um, <clears throat> so she lets it go to her head and she really does a, a, a takeover, a coup, if you will, and, <clears throat> and decides that she's going to be the leader. She was not in line to be the leader. She was not in line to be the queen, uh, but she took it on upon herself to do that. Now, this lady takes the little boy and she hides him in the temple. OK, and um. And, and this is really important. Uh, some of the things I want to talk about this morning are, are this is a, a pro-life story in the Bible. Here we have a queen who is annihilating everybody who's related to her. So that there's nobody else in line to be the queen uh, so that she can be the queen. Um, this is a pro-life story. Uh, uh, Jehoshaphat in this story uh, takes a little boy and saves him. It's a pro-life story. I can't say it enough times. Is that um, babies, children, unborn they all deserve life. Is that um, in a, in Psalms 127, verse 3, it says children are a blessing from God. And God blesses us with children, not just your biological children and not just your relative children. This Bible verse is talking about all children are a blessing from God. Children come from God and they're, import, they're important. And I'll say it again. Be an unborn, be a baby, or be a child. All children are important. 
And if you want to make a difference out there and you're listening to this today, you want to make a difference, find you a child, pour into that child's life, invest in them spiritually, teach them God's word and you'll make a difference. It's very, very important. Um, life comes from God and it should be cherished. Okay. And she proves that in this story uh, to me. Um, she ought to be preached every year on Sanctity of Life Sunday. She ought to be preached at least one once a year in the pulpit for what she did. And I today I'm so thankful for these pregnancy resource centers and Save a Life and all these other organizations that do everything they can with with these pregnant women uh, to teach them God's word, to show them other alternatives. Um, than abortion. And, and I'm so thankful for them. And, uh, and, and my mom started one of these in Bibb County uh, many years ago. And, and when I tell people about my mom, that's one of the first things I mentioned that I'm so proud of her that she started that center for these young ladies who came in and just needed an advocate. Okay. And, and I pray that you out there watching this today, that you decide that you're going to be an advocate for those who are unborn, for those who are babies, for those who are children. Um, if you're watching this today and you're a, a, a couple and you're not allowed to have children, that, that God has not uh, given you that ability to have children, then, then go find a child, adopt that child. If you don't adopt that child, then go find that child and you invest in them. Uh, you be their, their, their aunt and their uncle, their aunt and their uncle. Um, my children have have men and women in their life and, and one aunt in particular, she's not their aunt. And my daughter didn't know it. My 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 daughter called her Aunt Brittany and didn't know that that really wasn't her aunt because that's the role she played in their life. And so if you're out there and you're in that situation, do that. Get in church, invest in kids lives. Uh, if you if you go to church and you're a God fearing, Jesus loving person and you want to grow in the Lord and you want to serve find a child in your church, go teach Sunday school, go teach discipleship, go get involved in children's church. You need to invest in children's lives because you're investing in the future. And when we stop doing that, then we're saying that the future doesn't matter. Um, she, uh, she did what was right. Uh, and, and doing what's right is not always easy. She put her life on the line because if this lady would have caught her, if the queen would have caught her, she would have killed her. But she did it because it was what's right. And doing what's right it's not always easy. Uh, she, she, another thing I want to point out is she took him to the temple of the Lord. Okay. This is very important. This is where parents that are listening, you need to be taking your children to the temple of the Lord. Aunts and uncles out there, you need to be taking your children to the temple of the Lord, which is God's house, which is the church. Mom and dad, brothers and sisters, if you're out there watching and you're a teenager and you got a little brother or sister, you need to get them in church. It doesn't matter if your mom and dad go or not. You need to take them with you and get them in church. Teenagers, you need to be in church. Just like she did with this little boy, you need to be in church. And here's the reason why. As a child needs to be taught, so do Christians need to be taught in church. A Christian needs to be in church to learn God's word and to be taught. Children need to be in God's house, in church, so they can learn and be taught. If you're a Christian and you're watching this and you don't go to church, there's no way you're as close to God as you're supposed to be if you're not going to church. Because I'm telling you, going to church as often as I can, hearing God's word, talk, and I learn God's word, I get closer to God. Now, I need to read at home and I need to do Bible studies at home as well. But those sermons and those lessons prepared by godly people, pouring them into my life, make a huge difference. Uh, and, and here's another thing too, is that she was pretty smart to take this young guy to the temple because I don't think this queen went to the temple very often. The type of lady that you see, and that's using the term lady loosely, the type of person that she was. I don't think she was in the temple a whole lot. So I think you could have hid this guy in the temple probably for a very long time and she wouldn't have known it. Um, so they're in the temple <clears throat> and they're hiding from this lady. And then what happens is the priest in the temple, when, when he reaches the age of seven, then all of a sudden they declare him as the king. They bring him out and show that this is the lineage of David. This is going to be the next king. He should be the king. And then the temple guards and the priests, they support him and they get him there. And then they turn around and take this queen and, and, and they kill her. Okay. And then he becomes the king as seven years old, a seven year old king. Okay. And here's what um, second Kings chapter 12 verses one and two. This is what it says about him. 
It says, in the seventh year of Jehu, it says, Joash became king, and he reigned in Jerusalem for 40 years. His mother's name was Zibia. She was from Beersheba. Joash did what was right in the eyes of the Lord all the years Jehoiada was Jehoiada the priest instructed him. Okay, I want to some I want to point out some things right here about this is that he was seven years old when he became the king. He's the youngest king that is listed in the Bible. So he was seven years old. He reigned for 40 years. Okay, so this aunt um, Jehoshaphat, what she did for him, what she did for Joash is she brought 40 years to the kingdom of godly rule. Okay, so one action that she did impacted a whole nation of people for 40 years. I believe that when you pour into the lives of kids and children, when you pour in the lives of children, you never know when you're teaching a child and they become a Christian, what kind of impact they're going to make over the next 40, 50, 60 years of their life. You can change a nation, I truly believe, by impacting children and them coming to know the Lord and directing them in God's word and teaching them in God's word. And I'm not talking about your children. I'm not talking about your biological children, even though that is true as well. I'm talking about you, the Christian, watching today, impacting in a child's life, pouring in their life and making a difference. That's why I do what I do. That's why I've been a pastor, a children's pastor, and a youth pastor. Because God has called me to pour in the lives of children, teenagers, college students, young adults, senior adults. I've taught every group that I possibly can. And when I talk to, to senior adults, this is what I tell them. When I talk to mom and dads and I talk to grandmas and grandpas, and I say grandmas and grandpas affectionately, um, I love the grandmas and grandpas that I get to associate with. But I tell parents and I tell grandparents, pour in the lives of your children, your grandchildren, and other children around you so that you can make a difference. Um, it says that <clears throat> It says that he ruled for 40 years. And he did what was right in the eyes of the Lord. Here's the reason why this kid, king, this child king, who went on to reign till he was 47 years old, did what was right in the eyes of the Lord because he was raised in the temple and because the priest was teaching him God's word and the way he was supposed to lead. This is very important. And this is why I say that every child needs to be in church hearing God's word. I want my child in church to where when my child comes out of Sunday school and the pastor of the church sees them and they run up and jump in his arms and give him a hug and talk to him. I want that. I want my kids to have that. I want my children to have that. I want my children at church to see godly deacons, godly Sunday school teachers, godly people who pour in their life. At my church, I have over 50 people who pour in the life of my children every Sunday, every Sunday night, every Wednesday, who are making a difference to help me. Because what I want, I want my children and the children at church and the children in my compute in the children in my community and the children in my state and the children and the children in my nation. I want them to change the world because they've been raised and given godly direction and godly instruction. And it's up to you and I to do that. <clears throat> Too often, teenagers and college students and parents and grandparents, we get stuck in our own little world. What I mean by that is we drive up to our house, we open the garage door, we pull in the garage door, we close the garage door, we live our life inside of the house, we go to work, we come home, we do our own little thing, and we don't impact anybody else. <clears throat> when you teach God's word, and when you pour into someone else, it's like dropping a pebble in the lake and the ripple effects go all the way across the lake. It doesn't take a large disturbance in the water to cause that small wave to go all the way across. And that's what you do when you're pouring in the life of others. OK, so <clears throat> I also want to point out that this priest in this story. OK, if, if you're if you're watching this today and you are a preacher, you are a Sunday school teacher, um, and God, or a discipleship teacher, an RA teacher, a GA teacher, um, a missionary, whatever God has called you to do, I want you to remember that the seeds you plant, the seeds you plant, you won't know what a difference you're making until we get to eternity. And God shows you all of the children and adults that you impact 
you impacted by doing what he's called you to do. So don't get discouraged. Keep on pouring into children. Keep on doing everything you can to make a difference in their life. Because I'm telling you, it's working. Mark chapter 9, verse 37 says, whoever welcomes one of these little children in my name welcomes me. <clears throat> when you minister to children, he's talking about God here is that you're welcoming him. Jesus is saying that you are welcoming him, that when you love a child, you're loving him. OK, <clears throat> and so he instructs us to make a difference in the lives of lives of children. OK, um, I challenge you this morning in that whoever you are, how old, how old you are, it doesn't even matter if you're a 12 year old boy or girl and you're watching this. If you have a little brother or sister, pour into them. If you have a little cousin, pour into them. If you're watching this today and you're a you're an aunt or you're an uncle or you're a mom or your dad or your grandparent or your church member or you're a next door neighbor, find you a child, pour into them. You may be pouring into the next president, the next governor or the next Sunday school teacher or the next preacher. When I look at my life and all the men and women that poured into me to make a difference in my life, my aunts, my uncles, my mom and dad, my grandparents, they did so much to help me. But there were so many other people at church and next door neighbors who poured into me and ministered to me to help me be where I am right now. I did not do this by myself. There's so many people that poured into me. One of the ones that really sticks with me this morning is Mel Ramsey. This guy was a music minister at my church growing up. He took me under his wing. He took me out to eat. He took me to amusement parks. He taught me scripture. He taught me God's word. And then he put me up in front of people leading music in his place. And he taught me how to do it so that I would get comfortable being on stage because God knew one day <clears throat> that I was going to be preaching to teenagers and to adults. And that man poured into me and he was only in my life for a year. And then he passed away. <clears throat> and I can't wait one day to get to heaven and see all these men and women who have gone on to be with the Lord, who poured into me. And I just want to give them a high five and a fist bump and a hug and tell them thank you because you poured into my life to make a difference. I'm 46 years old and there's still adults in my church right now that pour into me <clears throat> to make a difference. And if you're, you're watching today, it doesn't matter what age you are. Find somebody younger than you, pour into them, minister to them, mentor to them and make a difference in the community in the family of God, that's how we change. That's how we make change. And I guarantee you this, you will never waste your time investing in a child. You'll never waste your time getting a child to learn scripture and growing in the Lord. <clears throat> it's a future. It's an investment in the future of God's kingdom. And it's a it's a investment in the future of this wonderful nation that we live in. So I challenge you this morning. I hope this helps you go to this scripture <clears throat> and read this full story. It's a very interesting story. And don't get caught up like so many people that you know all the stories of the Bible. So you don't need to sit down and read your Bible because that's not true. I hope you've enjoyed it. Thank you for joining us. I'm going to lead us in prayer. Father, we love you. God, I thank you for this Bible study this morning. God, help me to pour into children, to pour into teenagers, to pour into young adults. God, help me to make a difference through you. God, help me to pour into others the importance of Scripture and church attendance, the importance of service, the importance of giving back. And God, may I not be that person that pulls into the garage and is totally locked into my own family, my own home, and not making a difference in my community and in my church and for the kingdom of the Lord. God, bless all those that are watching this morning. God, I thank you for those that are watching that have poured into me and still pour into me. And God, I thank you for their support. And I thank you for their love. Give everybody a great day. And we thank you for all your many blessings. In your name I pray. Amen.